Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. This is another video in a series going over some of kind of the basics of Resolve for anyone who might be familiar with other apps or scared of the interface or just feeling maybe a little bit intimidated. The point of these is to get some basics down and get you a little bit more familiar with the tools so that you can jump into Resolve. I find a lot of people are super intimidated by the color page. There's just way too much going on. It's just a different interface than they're used to. So for somebody who's used to a three-way color corrector or maybe using the Lumetri panel inside of Premiere, that might be just a big reason to stay away from Resolve for you. But fear not, we're going to take a look at the color page and make it a lot less scary if you just know the basics about color. I have a project open inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. This is some footage shot on red that I got from Raw Film, a super amazing stock footage website. Check out the link in the description. And I've just built a little edit here of this guy who plays drums. So this is all shot in log, which means that the colors are really washed out, looks kind of gray, not very saturated. And normally inside of your editor, you would grab a color correction filter and drag it onto one of these clips, or you might select a clip and open up a Lumetri color panel. But in Resolve, there is a whole page dedicated to color. They pretty much made it so when you're ready to do some color correction, you have all the tools that you need at your disposal without having to worry about anything else. So we're gonna go over to the color page. If I go down to the very bottom, in the middle of our interface, we have a button here that says color. When I click that, our whole interface switches over to the color page. This is probably the point where you go, goodness, where's my timeline? Where are my properties for things? How do I, this is, I'm just, I'm out, I'm out. I'm gonna close the window and I'm done. But we're gonna take this one step at a time. It's okay if this doesn't make any sense for now. The good news is that you don't have to use every single thing in this interface. We're gonna take this step by step and walk through some of the most common basic things when it comes to color correction. Let's take a look at this crazy scary interface. Right here in the middle, you have your viewer. This should make a lot of sense. This is what's actually happening in the timeline. To the left, you have a big empty panel for the moment. Its default is on gallery, which we might talk about in a little bit. But if you look up here, we have similar buttons to what you'd see in the edit page, and one of them is called the media pool. So that's not really any different. It's just hidden behind a couple of other panels. I'll switch back over to my gallery. Over here to the right are the nodes. This is by far the scariest, the very scariest thing about the color page. And here's the good news you don't have to use them. Nodes are really awesome once you start doing some fancy color things, but for now, you can literally just close this. If it's scary to you, just freaking close that. Just shut it down. But just so we don't get lost, I'm going to keep that open for now. Now, below these three panels, we have our thumbnail timeline and our mini timeline. The mini timeline is pretty much just your edit timeline. It's the same thing, it's just squished down. I don't find this particularly useful, so I usually close it. You can do so by going up here to the upper left and clicking on this white button that says timeline, and we'll just close that out. I feel like that's one of the most intimidating parts about learning new software is there's so many panels, there's so many tools and things going on, and you feel like you need to know every single one of them. The truth is, all of them have their place, they have things that they're used for, but you don't need to learn all of them right off the bat. And right now we're just gonna focus on the panels that we need to use. So these thumbnails here are called our clips. This is just every clip from your edit timeline, just laid out, numbered, and presented in a nice visual way. It's just a quick way to select the different clips from your edit page. And everything corresponds. This third clip, the one with him grabbing the sticks, if we were to switch back over to our edit page, we'll see that our third clip in our timeline is him grabbing the sticks. These are just laid out for us so that we can quickly navigate without having to move a playhead around. Whatever clip that you have selected, that's the one that you're going to be adjusting, which is great because it also happens to be the one that you can see. So if I have my first clip selected, if I were to adjust any of these controls down here, it would affect the clip that's selected, the clip that's up in my viewer. So let's take a look at the color palettes, which are down here in the lower part of the interface. Again, there's a ton of stuff going on here. You don't need to know everything. Something that should look somewhat familiar are the color wheels. They're labeled Lift, Gamma, and Gain, which stands for the darkest parts, the midtones, and the lightest parts of an image. And there's two basic controls for each one. The first is the color wheel. This has a control in the middle 
that you drag around, and that adjusts the actual color of that section of the image. So in the gain, that would be the brightest parts. And the farther I drag this to the outside of the circle, the more saturated it's gonna be. And of course the direction is the actual color. So for instance, if I wanted this image to look warm, I could grab my control here in the gain and just move it towards that kind of yellowish, orangish, and we'll see our image looks warm. If I were to go back to my color wheels, and click this little circle arrow, that's gonna reset that control to its defaults. Below each color wheel is this little slider here we call the master wheel, and that adjusts the brightness of that section of the image. So for the gain, that's the brightness of the brightest parts. If I were to adjust the lift, that's the shadows, the darkest parts, and the gamma is the midtones. If you can get your head around how the color wheels work, you can do like 90% of what you want to do to an image. You can fix white balance, you can fix exposure, you can do creative looks, all just by adjusting the color cast and the brightness of the lift, gamma, and gain. And the easiest way to learn it is honestly just to open up an image and mess with it, see what it does, and get just comfortable with moving those controls around. The next part that I wanna look at are the primary controls, and those are these numbers down here right next to contrast, pivot, saturation, hue, luma mix. You can double click any of these and set a number, or you can just mouse over them and you'll get a little arrow icon and you can drag to the left or right to adjust that control. So if I move my contrast around, we can see it adjusts the contrast of my image. If we think the image needs more saturation, I can grab the saturation and drag that to the right to add a little bit more color. It's also worth noting that all of these controls can be switched out for other controls if you go over here to the left, you'll see a little slider here. One is selected right now. You can select number two, and that will give you some additional controls like temperature, tint, and some other adjustments. I know even in this panel, it seems like there's a lot of controls, but really if you open it up and play with it, you'll see the ones that are useful to you. For about 90% of the images that I grade, I use lift gamma and gain and saturation. So let's work on a shot just using these tools. I'm gonna to reset all of my controls by clicking this little circle arrow to the right of where it says primary wheels. That's gonna bring my image back to no adjustments. And I'm gonna look at this image and decide what I like and what I don't like. One thing I'd say is that the shadows need to be darker. It seems like the darkest parts of his shirt, darkest parts back here, maybe just aren't dark enough. So if I wanna adjust the darkest parts of the image, I'm gonna to go to lift. And if I want to adjust the brightness, I'm gonna to go to the master wheel right here and just drag it to the left and we'll see how it affects our image. I'm just gonna drag that to where I think things look dark enough and now things are definitely looking better. I'm also gonna go over to my gain and brighten up that master wheel because I feel like this image overall could be a little bit brighter. I'm just gonna click and drag that to the right a little until it looks nice to me. And now I'd say we're definitely getting somewhere. But now I feel like we definitely don't have enough saturation yet. So I'm gonna go down to my saturation controls and click and drag to the right to add a little bit of saturation to our image. So now we're getting to the point where this looks a little bit better. If I still think it needs more contrast, I can go over to my contrast control and click and drag to the right. That's gonna add some contrast to my image. So that's looking a little bit closer to where we want. If I'm happy with that, I can move on. If I'm not, I can continue to mess with the controls. So the color wheels and the primary controls, the little numbers that you slide back and forth towards the bottom, you could pretty much grade your whole project just using those. But let me show you one other tool that I really like when it comes to doing color. To the right of our primary wheels, we have our curves. And if you're familiar with Photoshop or any app that uses curves, this should make a lot of sense to you. I can grab my controls here and have a lot of control over the tones in my image what my contrast looks like, what parts of the image are bright and what are dark. I'm sure there are a ton of videos on the internet about how to use curves. It's been in Photoshop for years. Any way that you would normally use curves pretty much applies here. This is just another tool that's really easy to use and is right there in the color interface. So just using primaries and curves, I can do a lot to tweak my image to be exactly the way I like it. So now that we've looked at some basic controls for how to adjust the colors in your image, let's take a look at copying those adjustments to other clips. A lot of the time you'll have a couple clips that will pretty much take the same type of adjustment, especially if you have a continuation of a shot like we have this one where he grabs the sticks and then we have this shot which is just a little bit later in that source 
footage. It's the same shot, it's just split into two different clips. So we're gonna want a similar adjustment on both of these. We don't wanna do all of this work again because that would suck. So what we can do is adjust this clip and copy its adjustments to this clip. So what I'm gonna do is bring down my lift a little bit to darken it, bring up the master wheel on my gain to brighten it up and add some saturation. Maybe I'll just warm it up just for the sake of doing something a little different by grabbing my gain wheel and just moving it towards warm. And now we have this nice little warm grade. Now we wanna copy it over to this clip, the very easiest, easiest way to do that. Select the clip that you want to copy the adjustments to, and then mouse over the clip that you wanna copy them from, and middle button mouse click. Boom, done. If you don't have a middle button mouse, or if you hate that, you can right click on this clip, go to about the midway point in this pop-up menu and hit apply grade. That's gonna do the same thing. You can even copy your adjustments from one clip to multiple clips. If I hold down control or command on a Mac and select multiple clips, I can middle button mouse click on a shot that's already been graded and that will copy that look over to my other shots. And we'll just finish this last one. And now we have our whole project color corrected and we really only had to adjust a couple shots. So there's like a thousand more things that we could go over in the color page. There are a ton of advanced controls and ways to select color and, and make masks and do all kinds of fancy things. And I have just a, an insane amount of other videos on doing that. But this should hopefully get you started. If you're not familiar with detailed color grading and all of those type of things, you're just used to using simple color plugins, you can do really simple stuff within the color page of Resolve. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more color grading, post-production tutorials, videos on DaVinci Resolve, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. Thank you for watching. <laughs>